This aircraft is unlike anything you have ever seen. A two-part tandem aircraft that could transfer passengers between them, fly across America and change the very business model of air travel. The possible benefits foreseen were superior performance, comfort and service, as well as reduced congestion. And by the end of this video, I guarantee you'll be a believer that this is even better than flying today. I'm absolutely serious. This, my friends, is the Aerial Relay Transport System, or in my mind, the Flying Train. Our tale begins in the year 1979, and air transport in the United States is off in a big way. Planes are getting bigger, airports are getting larger, and American passengers are getting uh, more frequent flyer miles. Thus, NASA was tasked at projecting the future of aviation and predicting any roadblocks that might be coming up in the near tomorrow, as to better prepare airlines and aerospace manufacturers. The report, dubbed NASA Conference Publication 2036, made a ton of fantastic discoveries. Everything from recommending winglets on planes to supersonic passenger jets, and even advocating an advanced turboprop for all short-haul operations. But it's the hidden aerial relay system that's the most fascinating, and honestly guys, the most insane idea I've ever read. Dubbed ARTS for short, it was developed by Albert C. Kaiser of Langley Research Center, but you don't care about that, you want to just see how it all worked. This system, or train as I like to call it, consisted of two separate aircraft. The first is a large continuous flying liner that operated in conjunction with small feeders. A typical passenger journey would start with them arriving at a regional airport and boarding the feeder aircraft. This feeder aircraft would then take off and link up with an already in-flight liner. The passengers would then dock to the rear of the liner, passing underneath the cockpit of the feeder and board through the tail, taking a seat on board. The passenger would arrive at the vicinity of their trip origin and then depart on a different feeder in the vicinity of the destination. Simple. The liners would take on multiple feeders throughout its trip and there would be several different liners on different tracks across America. But I'll get to that in a moment because I'm about to drop a bombshell. These liners could actually merge into a mega aeroplane, just like one of those early 90s cartoons with the giant robots. Now I bet you're watching this and wondering, surely this would be utter chaos in the sky. But what if I told you, you didn't need this to experience airborne mayhem, thanks to today's video sponsor, War Thunder. Don't fast forward on that timeline, because I'm inviting you to come and play with me and fly some of the craziest aircraft ever built in War Thunder, a free online military vehicle combat game. War Thunder features over 2,000 different land, sea and air machines from the 1920s to the Cold War that you can fly, drive, cruise to challenge yourself to be better than the aces of the past. My favourite so far is the P-38E Lightning, blowing enemy bombers out of the sky. And there are many updates every few months with more content, like one that just dropped featuring the Soviet MiG-29 and the F-16A Fighting Falcon, which I can't wait to fly. You can also play solo missions, or my favourite, in huge air battles with over a hundred different maps. That's right, huge air battles that we can all play together. In the past, we've all played, and it's been the most chaos that I've ever seen in a match. I'm still very much a beginner at the game, so you have a great chance to save me from other players. Or if you really want, you can come and shoot me down, like everybody else did last time. Plus, when you make an account with my link, you also get a free bonus premium tank, aircraft and ship, as well as a boost to your account. The game's free to play across all platforms, PC, PlayStation and Xbox, and you can cross play with anybody on any other device. So you don't even need anything, a keyboard and a mouse on the basic PC will run it. Hey, don't forget that we're going to be playing War Thunder. Make sure that you make an account and do the tutorial first as it takes about 20 minutes and you don't want to miss out. The link to make an account is down below. The liner itself is a system of aeroplanes that may be regarded as modules. These modules would take off and climb as individual aeroplanes and link up once they reach cruising conditions. In this way, extremely large wingspan liners could be built up without requiring runways of an equal width. 
The module approach has other potential useful features, but I'll also get to that in a moment. In this case, a liner would line up next to another and use powerful electromagnets to dock together. Once the seal was completed and the two aircraft mated, the airlock would open and the controls would be handed over to the prime aircraft. And insanely, there would be no limit to how many liners could dock up together. With three of them, it was estimated that it could carry over 800 passengers coast to coast, with passengers able to transfer between each aircraft. These liners would be designed to have four engines to ensure that there would be double the thrust required to maintain a stable connection. But the report clearly states that in emergencies, they could quickly detach. The span loader design was chosen for maximizing passenger room and enhanced passenger comfort, but I couldn't exactly figure out where the windows would be, so maybe you can let me know down in the comments. But now I know you're asking, where would these aircraft fly? Well, put it this way, a train runs on tracks and this flying train wouldn't be any different. Multiple different track configurations were considered by the study, the most simple being Los Angeles to New York. This straight line track across America's sky would serve cities such as Las Vegas, Denver, Chicago and more, with feeder aircraft meeting a liner in flight. These feeders would have a range of up to 400 kilometers or 250 miles, so given enough time, the range was quite substantial to meet the liner in flight. A single liner on its own could serve a region of about 500 kilometers or 300 miles as it traveled along its track. Ideally, the liners would begin and end at each city pair and express services could be offered. This single track with multiple liners would have around 65,000 seats a day and would be far more efficient than the current point-to-point -point model that's the base of air travel today. And God, are you ready for some crazy numbers? The study proposed that an airline, such as American Airlines or United, start with a fleet of 42 liners and 130 feeder aircraft to cover the simple straight line from LA to New York. Since the bulk of the existing traffic occurs during the daylight hours, a larger fleet would eventually be needed. A reasonable projection might be 200 to 300 liners from 1990 to 2000 for this one initial route. The existing traffic is remarkably uniform along this route, so the liners would be well utilized. As the route network would slowly develop, the service could improve in both frequency and flexibility. After a number of major routes have been developed so that major intersections occur on along the route network, it might be desirable to carry the in-flight transfer concept another step by having the multi-module liners exchange modules en route. A three-module liner would split as it flew over Atlanta, for example, with one heading south, another north, and one west. This means, drum roll, hub airports are totally eliminated. Schematically, in the case of three routes meeting at a point, three liners could be scheduled to arrive simultaneously, separate, and recombine in such a way to comprise three new liners leaving that point, like a Rubik's Cube rotating in flight. The value of such a maneuver is that the passengers could be transferred from one route to another. For example, the path of a passenger who leaves Houston transfers in flight to another module and then eventually lives in New York, even though no single module makes that particular trip. Isn't that incredible? Who doesn't want this? The study believed that in the end, the airline would have a vast flying railway network across the skies of America. For the passenger, this means a reduced total travel time by avoiding layovers on the ground. It also means a reduced airport congestion. On the average, today's passenger must make two landings and two takeoffs per flight, but with the aerial relay transport system, only one takeoff and one landing per trip would be required to go across America. Ideally then, this should lead to a reduction of 50% of traffic across the country which you can imagine that even back then is a ridiculously huge claim. The report concluded that travel time and airport congestion aspects of arts seem to justify further study, independently of any cost or efficiency considerations. It also recommended more research on the operation of such a system, including scheduling, tip coupling maneuvers, the response of the multi-module liner to guests, weather effects in general, fuel reserves, and emergency conditions and the automatic control of the entire liner fleet as a system. 
So what on earth ever happened to our insane flying trains? As in true found and explained fashion, there are some flaws with this concept, and using the power of hindsight, we can examine it through the lens of today. First of all, aircraft travel is the safest way to get around in the world, and any aircraft design that makes things inherently more risky is inherently shut down. This design, with its mid-air docking, would be so dangerous and so many things could go wrong that it would never leave the drawing board. There is just too much risk, despite the benefits, for it to even be considered. Secondly, the line of design is massively flawed. Ignoring the fact that there seem to be no windows, we also need to consider that the low aspect ratio and huge squared off tips would have massive drag and generate huge turbulence behind and to the sides of the aircraft which funnily enough is the exact places that the other liners and feeders need to travel through. Plus, there is this false assumption that passengers only want one thing, point-to-point -point travel by aircraft where they can sit down and enjoy a movie, eat what passes as food, and get to their destination without having to transfer in any way. While the aerial relay system seems to be brilliant, it would have gone the same way as hub-to-hub -hub travel is going today because airlines know that they can just have a direct service with no stopping, no other boarding, and no other interruptions, and it would be far more popular. On a lighter note, you could only imagine how many FAA officials had a complete heart attack reading this report, and maybe it's best it just stayed as one. What do you think? Subscribe if you haven't and let me know down in the comments.